The decision to divorce is never an easy one, and the collateral damage can be devastating. On today's case, Mrs. Collier is a mother of four, soon to be seven, who says when she met her soon to be ex-husband, he was cute and charming. But now she says he's just an irritating clown who can't manage money or be trusted around other women. Mrs. Collier says her husband refuses to give her the respect she deserves, and she is ready to take their almost seven children and move on. Mr. Collier says there's a lot more to this story, but what he really wants to do is save his marriage and his growing family. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Collier versus Collier. Thank you very much. Mrs. Collier, you say you are here today because the future of your family is at stake and you believe divorce is the only option. You say you have lost all trust in your husband because you believe he's keeping secrets from you. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Collier, you say you can't go anywhere without being accused by your wife of wrongdoing. You are here today to save your marriage and according to you, divorce is not an option. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, there are a lot of stakes in this case, Mr. and Mrs. Collier, y'all are about to be seven kids in. Yes, Your Honor. You're pregnant with triplets right now. Am I correct, Mrs. Collier? Yes, Your Honor. So for you to bring a case to court contemplating divorce, it must be extremely serious. What brings us here today, ma'am? Your Honor, I have reason to believe that my husband has some shady behavior. Also, there's times that he's not very responsible with money. And I've also caught him um, being unfaithful multiple times. Recently, one time, and then I caught him talking to an ex before also. So there's just three many things going on with your husband that, according to you, is making you go, I actually am willing to get a divorce seven kids in? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Collier, tag your it, because I have to tell you, I don't think I've ever met someone who is literally pregnant with multiple children that say, I still would rather be without this man. What's going on? Your Honor, I'm here today because I would like to save my marriage with my wife. Honestly, I, I've made mistakes in the past. I, I just want to make everything right that I possibly can and put everything on the table so it can be water under the bridge. Okay, well, the only way it's going to be water on the bridge is if we all agree that we are going to tell the truth here so that both partners have the ability to make really good decisions based on an entire set of facts. Is that fair to say? Understood, Your Honor. It, Understood, Your Honor. Okay, wonderful. Why don't you take me back to the happier time when you all first met? Um, we met when I was in sixth grade. He was in eighth grade. I was on the bus one day and I was new to the school. One of my friends that I had met, I asked her, she just knew who he was. She pointed him out and he came by us and he said, well, you have the biggest boobs to be in sixth grade. And it kind of just went from oh, there. That's an opening line for you right there, Mr. Collier. Uh-huh. Yeah. So needless to say, Mr. Collier, you thought she was on point from the minute you met her. Yes, Your Honor, from the first second I ever seen her. Mm-hmm. And these are true childhood sweethearts that you all started dating from the sixth and the eighth grade and you get to this point. So go through all high school and then you get married, right? Um, actually, Your Honor, he graduated uh, and went on to high school. We kind of... Um... We kept in contact. I had different relationships. He had different relationships. Fair enough. And then when I had my daughter at 18, me and her father ended up breaking up, and that's when we rekindled our relationship. And okay. And did Mr. Collier step up? Yes. He's been in my daughter's life since she was nine months old. Okay. So, Mr. Collier, clearly you stepped up, and the baby girl became your baby girl. Yes, Your Honor. It's not the person that plants a seed. It's the person that maintains the garden. All right, now. You better go ahead and add to my repertoire of stuff that I want to hear. <laughs> so, you stepped up, and then you all started having children together. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. You all had three children. Yes. So, then now we have four babies. Yes, Your Honor. How in the ham sandwich do we get to this point right here? You said some shady behavior. What are we talking about, Ms. Collier? Uh, when I had my first son, Your Honor, uh, I caught him texting an ex. I ended up going through his phone. That was when I kind of just knew that he wasn't being faithful. And you did find some text messages? Yes, Your Honor. I think you submitted them to court. Hey, what's up? Um, I miss you. What you doing? For real? I'm with my son. Can't be on the phone. Uh, I miss what we did before was good. Wish you weren't there for real, for real. So she's clearly coming after him. Yes. He says, let me know what's up then. What? 
She says, let's link. And he says, I want you to, and I'm going to assume it's not something that he need to be saying At to somebody all. else. So, Mr. Collier, why? Are you texting this kind of information? Your Honor, at that point in our marriage, I felt like it might have been the end of the road. Uh, she had just had our son. And at that point in time, it's not an excuse, but postpartum was at an all-time high, and there was almost no help for it. So I was the backbone having to take everything, you know, all of that just... That's what you're supposed to do. You're a grown man. Your Honor... That's your woman. That's your wife. She just had your baby. Don't you dare look at me and say no stuff like that with Robert standing right here. <laughs> he might up. have to run over there and pop you. <laughs> That's what a man does. You're right. Okay, you stepped up and were a man to this young lady's first baby. You showed what a man does. What did you tell me about that baby? It's not the person that plants the seed. It's the person that maintains the garden. Yeah, exactly. Your Honor, but it had nothing to do with my children. It had everything to do with the relationship. Now, I might have said some things on the borderline that maybe I shouldn't have said, which that I'm willing to apologize for, and I have plenty of times, trust me. But as never even happened again. Your Honor, that So wasn't... you're telling me that this was a one-time slip-up of conversation with this chick. Am I right or wrong? Yes, Your Honor. Were you in the middle of having an inappropriate relationship with this ex-girlfriend? Not sexually, no. Her. Verbally, yes. So in other words, you had an emotional affair. Because yes, you Your cheated Honor. on text. If Mrs. Collier was texting... It would be unacceptable. There it is. That's all I needed to hear. Yes, Your Honor. Because you, you would have a fit, correct? I understand, yes. And you would have checked... That other dude with a quickness. 1,000%. Right. And if, in fact, Mrs. Collier were having that kind of conversation with your first child's father... I would have been on that side and she would have been over here. That's what I'm talking about. So, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Yep. And we must treat each other with that same level of respect. I did catch him up again. Yes, when I had our second son. Every time there seems to be some babies involved, you don't know how to act. He was only two weeks old when I caught him actually Your in Honor. the act with this one. When she got out the car, her toes drug across the asphalt. I did catch him up again? Yes, when I had our second son. Every time there seems to be some babies involved, you don't know how to act. What's going on, Ms. Collier? He was only two weeks old when I caught him actually Your in Honor, the act with this one. To be <laughs> fair, I was having a conversation with a person but that just happened to be a female at a gas station. He was only supposed to go and get milk, Your Honor. He was supposed to come right back. We were Your having Honor, I was some... stopped and intrigued into a conversation. It wasn't we, sexual, we were it wasn't having emotional. Some financial problems. Your Honor, we I were mean, staying in a hotel. By choice because we were trying to buy a house and I couldn't utilize but any we credit. Still, we were staying in a hotel. He was supposed to come right back to the hotel after he went to go get milk. Mind you, the hotel was two minutes from a gas station. He insisted that he went to this gas station that was 10 minutes away. Don't know why. What I think is they planned to meet there. He, an hour goes by, I'm looking at his location. He's still sitting at the gas station. Um, a family member just so happened to be staying at the same hotel. So I asked her if I could use her car. She didn't want me driving. Clearly, I just had a baby. She wanted me to make sure, she wanted to make sure everything was okay. It was a summer night. She was like, well, why don't you just put the kids in the car? We go make sure he's okay, because I thought something happened. We went to where he was at. Please don't tell me you rolled up there, I, baby's in tow. I rolled up in my gown and in my sandals. And when I pulled up, he was talking with this female. I got out the car. I asked what what was going on. Why, like, who are you? I've never seen you before. Why are you guys even? Miss Collier, I can tell you right now, you didn't say it that nice. You went left. No, the first <laughs> Your time Honor, I when did. When she got out the car, her toes no, drug across the asphalt. That was the second asphalt. time I pulled she, up. The car and stopped before she hopped out and jumped okay, to conclusions. Okay, well, let me, I'm about to figure out why. Go ahead, Miss Collier. We get in the car. We start driving back towards the hotel. His location is still pinging back at this gas station. Your Honor, and if I was being dubious, there. I would not share my location. I went back to the gas station that he was at. And they were just sitting there still talking as if nothing had just happened. So at this point, I was furious. Then I got out the car and I was like, at this point, you need to go or you can get dragged. And then I grabbed a Pepsi bottle and was going to throw it at her. But he grabbed me and threw me in his car. My, the family member had took my kids at this point. So in other words, you went left. Yes. And she ended up leaving. 
And when she left, we got in the car together and I asked him, like, what were you doing? Why were you talking to her? And why did you take an hour? And why couldn't you, if you, if it was friendly conversation, how hard is it to pick up the phone? Like, hey, I'm at the gas station talking with a friend. It's your well, turn, your Mr. Honor, Collier. It's your turn, Your sir. Honor, to be fair, I didn't feel like I was honestly doing anything wrong. It was a simple conversation. I had honestly no clue even who the person was a day before then. It was a simple conversation that just happened to Go on for an hour? On and yes. How would you feel if Mrs. Collier told you, I'm gonna go get some wipes? I'll see you in a minute. One hour goes past. Oh, hell no, I know she didn't go get no wipes. That's what's going in your head right now. I can guarantee you, I don't even know you from Panapay. Your Honor, you're right. Were you worried that she would be in a parking lot kicking it with some man? Were no, you worried? Your Honor. Why weren't you worried, Mr. Collier? Because I trust my wife. Wow. And why do you trust your wife? She's never really given me a reason. Wow! You trust this woman? Yes. She she's never given you any reason not to trust her or to love her. That's why you don't trip when she's away at the Target for four hours doing what women do, Mr. Collier. <laughs> I know, it's emotional. Yeah. Your because Honor. you are now realizing this is your woman, your wife. Correct, Your Honor. He bought a Rolex, and I asked him, how were you able to afford a Rolex? How much did you spend? He told me that it was $250. Girl, there's no $250 real Rolex. She always over worries. I submitted the receipt of what I spent for it. Maybe it's time that she knows. Oh! <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Did you see this number? If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Your Honor, also, we were sitting at the table one day. I kind of looked and I was like, is that a Rolex? He bought a Rolex. And I asked him, how are you able to afford a Rolex? Wait a minute, hold up. It was a Rolex? It was a, it's a real Rolex. How much did you spend? How much? I, he told me that it was $250. Girl, there's no $250 real Rolex. But I only, I only <laughs> told her it was that amount to, you know, try to keep her calm because she always over worries. But did your you honor... confront him on that? Yeah, well, I, something just kept telling me that he was not telling me the truth about it being $250. I submitted the receipt of what I spent for it and I just feel like maybe it's time that she knows. Wait a minute, hold up. Oh! Wait, 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 wait. That, that just hit me. Did you see this number? How would you be able to afford that? It says $37,000. What credit? What credit do we have of $37,000? I'm going to need to sit down. Your Honor. Oh, my God. Yes, Mr. Collier. I built my credit from the time that I was 18 years old. What credit do we have of $37,000? My American Express card is a credit I have, the one that you love to swipe at Target. Mrs. Collier, I know that you you probably are in shock. I'm going to try not to be in shock. Help me to understand this, sir. You're wearing your family's house on your wrist. Yeah. Times two. And your family's car. He also got another one, too. Um, Mr. Collier, you have or will have seven children. Correct, Your Honor. Um, do you know how much college costs? Yes, Your Honor, but I also have a plan for that as well. I have each and every one of my kids as authorized users on my credit. So guess what? Every time I make a payment on that $37,000, it builds their credit. So when they turn 18 years old, they'll have an 850 credit rating. I don't want to deny you what you need and what you want. But I just want you to think about what is responsible, Mr. Collier. Tell me what world you live in that makes you think that spending nearly $40,000 that you're gonna wear on your own. Honestly, Your Honor, I, I could put it like art. People spend millions of dollars on paintings that they hang on their wall that get your dusty. Your Honor, so, do you know those people who spend those millions of dollars? They have millions it, of dollars an and they have a house. Your Honor, if I'm at work doing things that it takes to provide for our family, I feel like I shouldn't have to hear about it. Mr. Collier, there's a reason your wife doesn't trust you. And here's the thing, if you want your family, you gotta build that trust. She doesn't trust you around other women. She doesn't like you having private conversations. You shouldn't be texting with your ex. She's never going to let it go because you've been doing shady stuff. That's the biggest lie I've seen come through this courtroom. It is disingenuous to not tell your wife that you just spent nearly $40,000, okay? And at some point, you are going to have to step up. And now I appreciate that you came with the truth today, but I don't know how she now says, okay, I can trust you, because that's a big one. Your Honor, 
I, I understand where it might be hard to gain some trust back for me, but I, I just try to explain to my wife every day that anything that I do financially... You try will, to cover try up to lies with, like, an family. excuse. And now you understand, like, why I wanted, like, want a divorce. Mrs. Collier, do you really want a divorce? I, th I, I think I do. It's constant lies. He doesn't... He... Your Honor, when we got back together when we were adults, that divorce was not going to be an option. Divorce well, that's not, not what it, I understand, Robert. Am I correct that there are divorce papers? Sure is. Can you please retrieve them for me? Go. Thank you. I am looking at actual legal paperwork to begin a order of dissolution that specifically talks about a petition with minor children involved. Mrs. Call, you're serious that you contemplated a divorce. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. We are here in this courtroom today because you say even though you are pregnant with triplets, you'd rather be single and co-parent than deal with your husband's destructive behavior. You've yes. told me that you're no longer willing to put up with his nonsense and you're ready to sign these divorce papers. Yes, Your Honor, it's tiring. I'm overwhelmed. I already have four kids. I'm only 23 and I have three more on the way. Dear Lord. If you want me to be a stay-at-home mom, then you have to communicate with me also when it comes to money because we have kids together. We have Your Honor, I make the money, so I don't have to share all of the information with you. You make the money, but then it you want me to be in charge of all the bills? It might make feel a not overreact that I know I'm going to make it back. Mr. Collier, you came to court because you say you, you want your wife to trust you. Yes, Your Honor. You really are looking for the relationship to go back to the way it was in the beginning. And the interesting part about it is things have changed with y'all. Yes, Your Honor. Any woman who is coming into a divorce court and saying, I'm willing to walk away and figure out how to parent seven children on my own should tell their partner, it's time for me to no longer be doing shenanigans. Mrs. Collier, I'm not sure if this is time for me to serve these papers, because this is going to be up to you. I'm going to try to save your marriage with just this one thing. Do you want your marriage and your family? Yes, Your Honor. I love my wife very much. I know she loves me every day. She wakes up and she shows me she loves me. I wake up, she'll make me breakfast. And I love her very much, but I'm working on being a better version of myself so I can help communicate with her more and discuss financials. But do you not understand, like, where I'm coming from? Like, I understand like... a thousand percent. No, you don't. Percent. You don't. Nope, when you don't. When I make the money to pay but every if bill I'm in our entire house. I have to get hospitalized? You can't say that you're going to be the head of the household and provide financially and then throw that back in her face with every single word out of your mouth. You cannot do that. You're the one that said you wanted her to be a stay-at-home mom. She works at that home, Mr. I get my coffee and my breakfast. How do you think you get that if she's not working? You may not throw the fact that you're making the money in the family in her face because she's holding the family together by a thread. Which, which... I don't know how it works in your household, but this is my house. And when I'm talking, I get to finish. That might be a first way for you to start learning how to communicate with your wife. Give her a minute to tell you what's on her mind and how she's feeling. You need post-marital counseling. If you want your family, you better commit to some work. I will, Your Honor. Mrs. Collier, I will either hold these papers or I will serve these papers. You let me know what you want me to do. I would like to do counseling, Your Honor. I'm definitely open to counseling. Mr. Collier? I'm very open to it now, Your Honor. Because that's the only thing that's going to save your marriage. Okay? Yes, Your Honor. I am going to get you a marital counselor in your community so you can actually sit down with someone and listen to each other. It's time to talk. I am not breaking this family up. Do the work, you two. Do you hear what I'm saying, Mr. Collier? Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Collier? Yes, Your Honor. Do the work. Can we schedule counseling when we get home? Yeah, we can. I want to be more open with you about our finances. You know, I want to get rid of that trait where we don't have to argue and fight about finances. Okay, Robert. I was, Ooh, there's just no man. way I was breaking up a family with seven children. This just wasn't going to happen. Can't do it. First, 
$37,000. That's a whole house on his wrist. Right. That's two cars. That's at least three people being able to go to college. Right. If my daughter was put in that position, I tell her homeboy, come here. Son, we're going to the pawn shop. Right. The only thing that matters is if these two young people can sit down and learn to communicate, because otherwise, seven kids in or not, that relationship will not work. No. Made in Georgia.